That's how we like to start our services. Just start by being excited. Start by giving praise to Jesus. And we're going to do that. We're going to sing a couple of songs today. The words will be on the screen so you can follow along. And during this time, I would encourage you to sing, to put your hands together. And let's just give our God all the praise he deserves. Today, as we sing, church, would you join in with us full of confidence and full of worship? Come on. Put your hands together. Oh, you're sounding great already. Let's sing it. service at this time and we have something very special happening in service today we have three families are going to be standing on this stage in just a bit dedicating their children before the church before god and it's just something that we're all about here life church it's the beginning of the life change journey for so many of these little ones today so right now I'm, you can go ahead and be seated turn your attention to the screens check out this video Today, we have the privilege of standing by several families that have chosen to dedicate their children unto the Lord. Before we get started, I wanna take a second and explain what a baby dedication is all about and where we find it in scripture. We believe that God has a plan and a purpose for every child's life. And we believe it's our responsibility as parents and as a local church to raise our children with the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We find the first baby dedication in the Old Testament 
when Hannah dedicates her son Samuel, as recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And we see it continued into the New Testament with the dedication of Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 21. When a family decides to dedicate their children unto the Lord, we give them two verses from the Bible that every parent should live by. The first is found in Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. The second verse is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. It says, these commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. As parents, it's your responsibility to take God's word and instruct it to your children throughout their life. And as a church, it's our responsibility to come alongside the parents and reinforce these values that they are teaching to their children. And that is exactly what we are doing today as the body of Christ. Good morning, Life Church. Will you welcome these families and these children that are being dedicated today? Amen. Everybody's all in their best behavior. That's right, clapping. They've got food. This is good. So we're going to do this, moms and dads. Everybody looks good. Don't they look good? Yeah, wow. So this morning, I'm going to ask you just a couple of questions. And, uh, and then we're going to, and you will simply respond with, we do. And then uh, we're going to have prayer partners that are going to come. They're going to stand behind each one of you guys as families and pray for you. Tammy and I are going to pray with you. And then we're going to pray as a congregation as we dedicate, as these moms and dads dedicate their children unto the Lord. So do you now present your children before God in solemn dedication? And do you consecrate yourself as parents to bring up your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? And do you promise to instruct them in the teachings of Jesus Christ and the practice of prayer and to guide them in the development of a Christ-like character? And do you promise to try to the best of your ability to shape the home life of your children by family devotions, your words, your example, that they at a proper age will naturally come to an open confession of Christ and to the fellowship and the service of the church? So at this time, I'm going to have the prayer partners. They're going to come and they're going to pray and uh, they're going to stand behind you. And uh, they've also got, uh, they've got a gift for you guys. Uh, so it's a, a certificate of dedication and it's also a uh, a Bible and a, and, a, and a flower carnation that's there. And would you stand with me all across this room? And just, uh, if you would, just stretch your hand, hand forward, just kind of like you're, you're, you're kind of praying with these couples and with these families. And uh, let's pray for them right now. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus for every one of these children that are being dedicated today. I thank you, Lord, for their, the, the life. God, we know that you are the giver of life. Lord, we know that no life comes into existence, God, without your divine hand being upon. Lord, we know that these children are a blessing from you. That's what your word says. And so, God, as these moms and these dads are coming before this congregation, this family of faith, and they're dedicating their children as unto you, I pray, Lord, that you would bless this today. I pray, God, you bless these children. I pray, God, you put a hedge of protection around them. I pray, God, you would strengthen them to be all that you've called them to be and all that you've designed them to be in Jesus' name. I pray let them find their purpose in you and their hope in you, God, that they'll be a blessing, not just to their moms and their dads, but, God, to the world in which you've placed them. I pray, God, for every dad that's standing here on this platform. I pray, God, you give them strength, Lord, as they develop character, Lord, as their children are going to look to them to see what a man of God looks like. Not perfect, but a man who's pursuing you, Jesus. I pray, God, bless them and strengthen them. I pray, God, for every wife, for every mom that's standing here, Lord. I pray, God, you put a hedge of protection around them and you'd minister to them and you would strengthen them. I pray, Lord, as their children will look unto these ladies of what a woman of God will look like. Again, not perfect, but a woman that is striving to be like you, Jesus. I pray, God, you bless brothers and sisters that may be here on the stage, may be coming in the future. Lord, I just pray, God, that you would just bless these families. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you give them another hand as you're seated today? Very cool to be a part of. You can go ahead and be seated at this time as the families make their way off. Uh, 
Man, so awesome to be a part of a baby dedication and thank you for your support because this is not just about the families, it's not just about the babies, it's about the church as well, that we're setting an example of what it looks like to be a man of God, a woman of God. And so thank you for being that kind of church today. Uh, hey, before we get back into a couple more songs of worship, just want to take a moment and welcome you, uh, especially if this is your very first time to Life Church. I know every Sunday there's people here for the first time, especially on a baby dedication Sunday, may have some friends and family visiting. If that's you, thank you for being our guest today. In fact, there is a guest card in the seat in front of you. If you take a moment, we would love to be able to say thank you for being our guest. And so if you fill out that blue guest card, uh, we're going to send you a gift that's just our way of saying uh, thank you for being our guest today. Uh, there's also a Next Steps card there if you want to get more information about anything going on here at the church. Uh, one of those things is Life Track. If you want to know, if you want kind of a crash course in what Life Church is all about, Life Track is a one hour class where we kind of tell you here's what we believe, here's where we're going, here's some opportunities, ways that you can be plugged in and involved here at the church. Uh, on, that, on that card, just mark the box that says Life Track. You can drop those in the offering boxes on your way out of service. Uh, you could fill out either card digitally if you want via text or even scanning the QR code on the seat in front of you. Uh, but again, we would love for you to join us in Life Track. Uh, last but not least, if you came prepared to give today in our tithe and offering, there's many different ways that you can give. You can see those on the screen. I just want to say thank you for your generosity. Thank you for always going above and beyond. Uh, Pastor Aaron is going to share in just a moment uh, after we sing a couple more songs together what you gave last Sunday in our offering for uh, India, for a Bible college in India, and just uh, just always go above and beyond. And so thank you for your generosity today. Well, I know I just told you to sit down. Why don't you go ahead and stand back up? You got to kind of keep things flowing this early in the morning. But man, thank you uh, for joining us today. We're going to sing a couple more songs. And you know, as we sing today, really, when, when I always, as, as a kid, when I ask the question, why do we go come to church every single Sunday? Why? Because I was, I was one of those kids. Every single Sunday, I'm there. And as an adult now, it's more than just checking a box. It's more than just saying, ah, I went to church and I'm a good Christian. It's to be reminded of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I, there's many times where I just, I, I forget about it. I live life as though I, I forget about that hope that I have in Jesus Christ. But the Bible says in, in the book of Hebrews that we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. And we need moments, we need moments where we sing about that. We need moments where we pray about that, where we're reminded of that today, that we have an amazing hope in Jesus Christ. And so would you join us today as we sing a couple of songs together and we declare the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. We thank you that that hope anchors our soul. That no matter what we may be facing, no matter if we're on the top of the mountain or in the middle of the valley, that we have a hope that we can be anchored to today. And so today we sing songs, reminding, not only reminding ourselves, but declaring to you the hope that we have in you. We thank you for it today. In your name we pray. Amen.
lift our voice. Let's begin to give our God all the praise, all the worship he deserves. He wants our hearts today, church. Let's lift him up. Say, in my life. In my life. Oh, come on, you know it. God, some praise today. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that when we call out to you, when we reach out to you, you reach out to us with open arms. God, we thank you that you're on our side, that you loved us so much that you gave your life just to be close to us. And our only response this morning is to pursue you. God, make us more like you today. As we hear the word, challenge us to surrender over and over and again and again. God, challenge us to re-surrender. Maybe that's where we are. But God, we just ask that you would be with us today during the rest of this service. It's in your mighty name we pray. And everybody in the church said together, amen, amen. Hey, let's give God praise just one more time today. Well, thank you so much for singing. Thank you for worshiping with us. We're going to go ahead and continue on with our service. You can go ahead and be seated. You're about to see a promo video for our upcoming worship night, which is this Tuesday. And then after that, Pastor Aaron's going to come out on stage and preach a great word. So thanks for worshiping with us and welcome to Life Church. Life Church, we are so excited to announce our upcoming worship night. This worship night will feature fresh releases from Life Church Music, 
provide a time of worship and be an experience that anyone can enjoy. This night will provide an opportunity to break out of your regular routine and get out of your worship comfort zone. It's a great time to meet new people and connect with members across all our Life Church campuses. The event will take place on Tuesday, March 29th at our Germantown campus, and childcare will be provided for children up to age three. Worship night truly is an experience for everyone. So invite your friends to this gathering on March 29th. We'll see you there. Good morning. Welcome to Life Church. I'm Aaron Cole, the senior pastor. It's great to see you today. If you're welcome, we, can we welcome our campuses in Appleton, Germ Germantown, Brookfield, uh, Milwaukee online? <laughs> Wherever you're connecting with us from, we're glad that you're with us and we're glad that you're here and we want to welcome you to Life Church. I know there's a lot of great churches you can be at and participate in, but the fact that you're with us, we're honored to have you today. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to get into this message, this new series in a moment. But before I do, I also want to say a big thank you to all of you for your generosity uh, last weekend. So we presented a, an opportunity for you kind of above and beyond greater, which is our kind of our missions giving arm here at the church. And uh, you responded with incredible generosity. So right now we're about a little over $100,000 in that offering that came in last week. Uh, the goal is 130, and so again, some of you might have been gone, you might not have been able to be here. Oh, I, I wanted to do something for that. So uh, to close that gap in, again, no pressure, do what you want to do. $100,000 is amazing, uh, but my experience has been that that last 30,000 will come in in the next seven, eight, nine, 10 days, and then we'll celebrate that. But I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for responding, thank you for giving. Um, the other thing that's just very, very interesting to me always is when, when something like that is happening, it, it's not like it's, it's going from, well, we're not going to tie this week. We're just going to give here. We're not going to do this. We're just going to, no, it's above and beyond. And that's the amazing generosity that you are, Life Church. And so, again, just wanted just to say thank you for that. And we'll be giving you an update on that. And, uh, and then as soon as that building gets built, you'll see a picture of that. We'll probably be invited. And uh, I know Tammy wants to lead a trip to India. No, she's laughing. So <laughs> her last memory of India was uh, Calcutta getting get on an airplane trying to convince the flight attendants that she was not sick, and she was. And um, anyhow, and then that's, that's the last thing I hear from her is, I, I, I got to go. And I was like, oh, Lord. Because if that, that was me, check me into, like, the nicest hotel like, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I am not getting in a metal tube for 18 hours, right, to fly. And, uh, and so to get here, but she's a trooper. She's tougher than I am. I know that's not a surprise to any of you, but anyhow. So, uh, but, but anyhow, but we'll, we'll have an opportunity to be able to see that and do that and be a part of that. So I just want to say thank you again for your incredible generosity. And I, I hope that you know how generous of a church that you are. And again, just want to say thank you for that. We're starting a brand new series today. It's a three-week series that will lead us right up to Easter. And again, I would encourage you. You're starting to see promotions for Easter. There's invitation cards for Easter. The reason why is studies show over and over and over again, if you, not me, people think, I get paid to do this. Your campus pastor gets paid to do this. We're on staff. We invite people to church. That's what we do. But when you... Someone who is a coworker, a neighbor, a friend, a family member, you invite someone to Easter, they are highly likely to come unless they have previous plans or engagements. Uh, same way with Christmas, Christmas Eve services, Christmas weekend services. People, they just typically tend to go uh, unless there's some extenuating circumstance. And one of the great things is because Easter is so late this year, uh, a lot of spring breaks are not tied or tethered to Easter the way they have been in years past. And so this is a great opportunity, meaning people are home. They're here. They're going to go somewhere. And uh, I know you think everybody goes to church every weekend just like you do. Amen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know those of you that do and don't, and I'm just teasing. But I'm just saying, like, you, you think that's, and, and so the reality is, is they don't. And so, especially even with COVID, people have gotten out of the habit and the practice. And it's just a great opportunity to invite people. As well as there may be brand new people living in your neighborhood that just bought a house, sold a house, whatever. Invite them. 
You know, they're, they're moving from a different part of the country, a different place, whatever. You know, we see different uh, license plates in our neighborhood from time to time. It's like, oh, there's somebody great. They're, they just moved here from South Carolina. Let's invite them. And so at least when I go to the door and say, howdy, neighbor, they're like, oh, there's someone who talks like I talk. <laughs> it happens. So anyhow, um, so, so I just encourage you to do that. And, but as we start this series on bridges, it's going to be a, it, it, this this. Bridge series is really about the relationship that we have, first of all, between us and the Lord. It's a relationship that we have between uh, each other as, as in, in walking in unity, which is a message that I think is always timely. And then also a bridge that we build to the world. And so it's a very simple message, but I'm going to walk through this passage that Paul writes to the church in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 2. And uh, see, a bridge is simply this. It's a structure that's built over a gap that connects two previously unconnected spaces. A bridge is simply a structure that's built over a gap that connects two previously unconnected spaces. Now, in our country, you've heard a lot on the political scene about crumbling infrastructure and about bridges and overpasses. Fern Hollow Bridge in Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, was built in 1973 for $1.2 million. It's a 497-foot uh, steel span bridge frame bridge. has about 14,000 cars a day. And in January 29th, we woke up that morning to find out on the news that that bridge had collapsed with morning traffic and commute going into Pittsburgh that morning. Bridges are incredibly important, especially if there's been a bridge there and it's gone. Or if you're trying to get from point A to point B and it's a span that's bigger than you. It's beyond what you have the ability to jump or to leap. And sometimes we like to think we're Superman, but we're not. And we try that only to kind of fall and, and find ourselves there. Today, I want to talk to you about the bridge that God builds for you and I through Jesus Christ. Again, some of this may be elementary for some of you. Some of this may be you may not even be a Christ follower. Maybe you're watching online, maybe you're at a campus, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is a great message for you to hear today. Maybe you've got friends or family members or coworkers that you go, man, they're just right there, but they've not yet crossed the line. This is a great sermon just for someone to hear, a message for them to hear of hope, how much God loves us. Because our world will tell us that if we have a distance, a span, a gap between two points that we cannot cross or traverse, that we just need to figure it out in ourselves. that self-help is the way. Matter of fact, if you go to a physical bookstore, you'll find that that self-help section just keeps getting larger and larger and larger as we try to figure it out more and more and more on our own. But the solution is never self-help, according to the word of God. The solution is a word called salvation. And that's what Paul talks about. So I want to read this passage, and I want to unpack this today. Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 5. And you were dead in the trans trespasses and the sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that is now at work and the sons of disobedience and among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Verse four, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ by grace. You have been saved. Now skip on down to verse number eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. So in verse one, this is my first point. My, in verse one, he, he begins it with, you were. You were. He, he talks about the fact that before Christ, this is where you were that you were, you were, it's your past. It was before Jesus. It was, you were a sinner. He says, you were dead in the trans trespasses and trespasses and sins. We've all been there. Maybe you are there right now. What kills us is, 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 is not us. 
It's the sin. It's our sin nature. It's the trespasses. It's God sets his word and says, this is what, this is what we need to live by because he is the creator. He gets to establish it as the creation for us. And so we can't get to there. It's, 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 it's a bridge too far. It's, it's a span too far. We, we, we can't, we, we try to make it. We, we try to be good. We, we try to be perfect, but, but, but we can't. And the thing that kills us, the thing that gets us, It's not our inadequacies of intelligence or or emotional capacity. It's not our desire. It's not even our want to. If you've ever figured that out, sheer will will only get you so far. Even uh, secular psychologists today will talk about how you want to make change in your life. New York Times bestselling authors on change will talk to you and will say, hey, self-help, sheer will, willpower will only go so far. But man, how do we try? And the truth of the matter is, is that we're dead because of our own sin. We're dead because of our own trespasses. He'll talk about it on in verse 2, that this is the course in which the world works through. This is not a new thing. This is not something that just began with you. You're not the only person that's dead in your sin and trespasses. It's something that we all, he says in verse three, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were nature uh, and by the nature children of wrath. Again, it's, it's, it's original sin. We, we were born into this sin nature. And, and again, I've had theological conversations with people from time to time. I don't know if I really believe in that. And, and I don't really think that. I think that we're all born pure and, and just without any problems. And then this world corrupts us. Let me take you to the infant nursery right now. Let me take you to the two-year-old room. Just talk to the parents of these beautiful children that were on this platform a few minutes ago for baby dedications. Oh, they're wonderful kids. Beautiful. Beautiful. Delightful. Yeah. But, but there's something inside that just is like, it's mine. It's, it's, it's my way, right away, now. Before they ever even know what Burger King is even about, it's like, that's their slogan. Like, no, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And if I don't get what I want, then I'm going to have a meltdown. I'm just going to completely, in the middle of Target, I am going to scream like you have hit me and, and like, like you're beating me. I, I'm going to do whatever I have to do. I saw a lady one time I was going to a movie. It was a grandmother. And I could tell she had had all she could have, right? She was like at that Popeye moment when he's about to pop the can of spinach, you know? (laughs) And that child was just melting down and she turned and I'm standing right here. She's in front of me, get the concession. She looks at him and she said, I swear to the Lord above, if you don't stand up and you don't look and you don't keep your mouth shut, I will beat you until you are gone. (laughs) She was like, that kid was like, oh, he was immediately like to attention. (laughs) She was just, she had done everything she could do. I, I wouldn't prescribe saying that or doing that. I'm just telling you what I observed, <laughs> right? Um, it's just, it's, it's our nature. And as we get older, it's, it's, it's the world in which we live just kind of goes, it's okay. And if we're not careful, we start thinking, well, it's okay. It, it's okay that I do this. It, it's okay. You know, may, may, maybe the pastor's wrong, and he can be. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe the, you know, maybe the Bible was translated poorly. Maybe, maybe it really doesn't mean that. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's really more to this. Maybe, maybe there's just, maybe, maybe I'm being too legalistic. Maybe I am whatever. And, and the enemy of your own soul will try to make it more and more and more about you. And the truth of the matter is this. We're born into this sin nature. Not by choice of our own. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. And in that, we're born into that sin nature, and then we do what everybody else does. We sin, and we fall short of the glory of God. And what Paul will write to the church in Rome is that there's none of us that are righteous, not one of us. And so that's where we were. And that's Paul's example. I mean, the author of Ephesians, Paul, he's a persecutor of the Christians. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He's embroiled in this legalism where he's keeping the letter of the law, the Torah, the Old Testament. And he participates in the stoning of Stephen, who is the, one of the first deacons in the New Testament. And, and, and until you see yourself as a sinner, you'll never see your need for a Savior. 
This is the reason why a secular society constantly wants to go, we don't really believe in original sin. It, you're really not as bad. You're really not whatever. And, and, and the deal is, 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 yeah, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and God has a great plan for you, and God's great and all that, but you've got this kryptonite. You've got this issue. You've got this thing. We all do, every one of us. It's different for all of us. That It's just, this is my weakness. This is my sin. This is my frailty. This is what I deal with. And that's the reason why, like even as a pastor, I talk about sin, not because I'm trying to be judge and jury, please. The older I get, the longer that I stand and preach, the less I want to be that guy. It, you know, it's kind of like what you should have asked me about parenting when before Tammy and I had kids. When I had a Labrador Retriever, I could tell you all about how to parent your kids. When I was a youth pastor, oh my goodness, I could do this and this and this and this. I'm telling you, I have apologized to every parent that I've ever seen that I had their kids in youth ministry. I'm so sorry that I did that. I'm so sorry I put you in that position. I'm so sorry that I was, please accept my apology. And they go, you've got kids now. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's humbling. It's humbling, Right? You know, and, and then they get to a certain age and you're going, you're going to wear that? <sighs> and I've got girls. Oh, my goodness. Right? The hormone Hilton. I'm just telling you, like, it is drama, mama, all the time. You don't understand, dad. You don't understand. This is what everybody's wearing. Well, if everybody was going to go jump off of it, you know, you can, right, are you going to follow suit? I mean, it's just, wah, wah, wah. It's just, Right? You with me? So, so, so the deal is, 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 is the truth of the matter is, is that we, we, we're, we're born into this and, and, then, and then we trespass and this is where we were. And we find ourselves as a sinner. And, and the world wants to say you're not as that bad, but the truth of the matter is we are. The truth of the matter is we've got to look in our sin and understand that God said this is what I need you to do and that you and I don't measure up. That's where we were. And the only way to span that, to bridge that gap is through Jesus Christ. Johnny Cash said it this way, how well I have learned that there is no fence to sit on between heaven and hell. There is a deep, wide gulf, a chasm, and in that chasm, there is no place for any man. You were, that's what Paul would say. And if you've been saved for a long time, if, you've, if your salvation experience happened 10, 15, 20 years ago or further, never forget where you were when God found you. You, you want to make sure you're not a crusty Christian? Just remember where you came from. Because it's real easy after you've been doing this for a while to kind of put Christian ease and Christian spin and just kind of put your thing on. It's easy to judge from your point of strength, not from your weakness. It's easy to sit there and fold your arms, go, I don't know if I would do it that way. It's easy to armchair quarterback every decision that's coming down when you're not in the huddle and you're not behind the center and you're not in the middle of the action. It's easy to do that because we forget how bad we were. We forget how sinful we were. This is one of the things I love about Paul. Paul talks about his junk. He talks about his sin. He talks about his weaknesses. He talks about who he is and who he's not. And only but by the grace of God go I, Paul says. You were. And then those two words that began in verse number four, but God. I love those two words, but God. Everything's going to hell in a handbasket, but God. Everybody's about to lose, but God. You're dying in your sin, but God. You were born into your transgressions that you had no ability to control. You, you committed sin. You trespassed against God. You allowed your own flesh of your mind and your body to take you places that you don't even, you would never want to be on the screen and anybody to see, but God showed up. Don't ever forget that it's that but God moment. It's by the grace of God that we've been saved, that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, lest any of us become boastful. It's that but God moment that he says. And Paul's but God moment, he was on his way to the high priest. And Ephesians 9, 1 tells us he was still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord. And then Jesus comes and appears to him, knocks him off of his, of, 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 of his horse, and, and he's blinded. And he's taken to a disciple named Ananias who prayed for him, believed in him when everybody else was scared of him. And Ephesians 9, 18 said, something like scales fell from Paul's eyes and he regained his sight. A truly, I was blind, but God, now I see moment. Paul writes to first, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 and 13 this, I thank him who has given me strength through Jesus Christ our Lord because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. 
Though formerly I was a blasphemer, a, prose- a persecutor, uh, uh, an insolent uh, opponent, but I received mercy and I acted ignorantly in unbelief. See, Christianity, to follow Jesus, is not a behavior modification technique. It is a transformation of the soul. This is the reason why self-help is really of no help at all when it comes to this. Because it's but by the grace of God that I'm saved. It's by the grace of God that I'm standing before you. It's by the grace of God that you're in this room. It's by the grace of God that the parents that stood on this platform earlier that dedicated their children, it's by the grace of God that God's going to help them and see them and, and, and do great and wonderful things in their homes and their marriage and their lives and their children and their families. It's the grace of God. It's this soul transformation. It's God comes into my heart and into my life and he does a work in me that I cannot do in myself. He changes me in a way that I cannot change myself. He renews my mind. He cleanses my heart. He gives me peace that I cannot find anywhere else. You ever had those moments where anxiety and fear and panic so grip your heart that you cannot sleep? And you get up and you walk the floor and you can pace the floor and try to process it, but it doesn't alleviate it. You can take medicine and it will be gone for a moment, but it will come back. You can talk to everybody till you're sick of talking and it's no relief, but you get on your knees and you go, oh God, in this moment, I need the peace of God that passes all understanding to rule and umpire my heart. I need you to step into where I'm at. I need you to reach into my soul. You pray one of those Psalm 51 prayers, creating me a clean heart heart. Oh God, or renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord, and take not your spirit from me, but, but restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it begins to lift and this sweet presence of the Holy Spirit begins to fill your heart and the things that were weighing on your soul begin to go and the panic is driven away. Why? Because you don't need behavior modification. You need a soul transformation. And you go, that sounds so easy, but yet it's so not. Because the price to pay for that was Jesus going to the cross for your sins and for my sins, dying on the cross for our sins. He who knew no sin became sin for you and for me so that we might become the righteousness of God. How do you receive that? Oh, that's very simple. You confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is who the Bible says that he is, Romans 10, 9 and 10, and you will be saved. And the peace of God that passes understanding will umpire your heart. And the joy of the Lord that's your strength that will go above and beyond any happiness this world can ever bring will live inside of you. See, this doesn't happen from the outside in. It happens from the inside out. It's a true transformation of the Holy Spirit, of the work of God. Jesus bridges the gap between sinful man and a holy God. And how does he do it? Paul says, by grace. Verse 8, by grace. It's by grace that I've been saved. It's by grace that you've been saved. It's by grace that these families that were standing on this stage or dedicating their children to the Lord are saved. You could be born in a lot of places in this world today. You ever thought about that? You could be fleeing Ukraine, going, I I didn't ask for this, this isn't what I wanted. I, 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 running for your life. But yet you're here in America. And I know America is not perfect, but I'm telling you, if you've traveled much at all around this world, there is no place that is as blessed as this place is. We got our problems. Yep. I got it. Don't email me. If you're going to email me, it's rcoggins at lifechurchwi.com. <laughs> Just, that's not even my name. Someone's like, what's, who's R. Coggins? Just email him. He'll talk to you. <laughs> You're here. That's the reason why, like, what you did last weekend with the offering for India is important. You weren't born into a Hindu family that believes in a gazillion gods. That's more confusing than a termite and a yo-yo. I mean, like, what do you do with that? Like, which one gets you? We don't know. So we believe in all of them. You're you're not born in a place where you don't have access to the gospel. You don't have the Bible in your own language. Do you know there are places in the world that have no Bible in their heart language? 
dozens of countries in this day and time. You, you don't live in a place where it's illegal to own a copy of the Bible or read the Bible or practice your faith openly? No. But by grace, I got up this morning and I said, thank you, God, for a strong body and a healthy mind. By grace, thank you for heat and a house. By grace, thank you that there's food in my cabinets. There's hot, fresh coffee that's in my coffee maker. By grace, thank you for the technologies and all the things that I have that make my life so much easier. Thank you, Lord, for my wife. Thank you, Lord, for, for my daughters. Thank you that they're healthy today. Thank you, Lord, today that I get to go and worship together. We have choice in this. And I get to go to a great church with great people and get to worship you openly without any type of, 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 of an impairment, any, any type of, of, of anybody pushing back. And it's, it's by the grace of God. And, and thank you, Lord, that, that all of this, th thank you, God, for, in, in my case, maybe not in everyone's case, but in my case, I was raised in a Christian family that taught me early on. I, I, I was raised in, in, in going to church, and, and this is the way I was brought up in that. I, the, it's, it's you teach and train a child when they're old and when they're, and when they're young, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. I, I was taught God's word at an early age. I was, I was taught how to serve the Lord at an early age, and I didn't grow up in a pastor's home. I, I grew up in a, just a, a, a layman's home. Some, some, my, my dad worked in a factory. My, 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 my mom was the, the manager at the, at the local Avis counter at, at, at the airport, and, and I, I was raised in it just, just just a good, godly, solid home. Thank you. Thank you that my wife was raised that way. Thank you, Lord, that we raised our children that way. Thank you, God, that I have an opportunity. Thank you. This is why I don't understand why people don't go to church. I don't understand why people don't, don't avail themselves of things. We, we are so blessed. And I think part of the reason why that I am so much this way is because I've traveled to so many places and I've been in so many countries where I, I, I've been detained momentarily because I was bringing things into the country that I wasn't supposed to bring in because I was leaving them for pastors, you know what I'm talking about? And, 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 I, and, and are these yours? And uh, yes, they are, God forgive me. But yeah, yeah they're, they're all mine. And uh, but knowing that I'm gonna give, leave this Kindle here and this Kindle here. And I've been to places to where they, they, the underground churches and, and, and communist countries and places that I can't always talk about in public and, and things that are happening and things that are going on. And, 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 and I just go, and, and every time I'm in those rooms, every time I'm in those spaces, those people are so desperate for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And God comes in such an amazing way because all they had to go through. And I think to myself, but by the grace of God, I would be here. My kids would be here. This would be it. But I I live in a place where I can get up and I can go to church every day of the week if I want to. I can go to every prayer meeting. I can go to every Bible study. I can go to church every service. I can watch it online. I can tell my friends and my neighbors about it. I can go, I can go, I can go. It's the grace of God, right? That's the grace of God. And you go, man, you're just, but, but sometimes we don't think about this. Paul, but by the grace of God, he, he was a blasphemer. He was a persecutor of the church, but God showed up. Think about it, and even the New Testament, you know, the woman that's caught in adultery. And she's literally brought to the city, to the center square of town. And all of her accusers and all the religious leaders in that area circled around her. Interesting, they didn't bring the guy. Just a thought. He's just as guilty as she is, Amen. And Jesus, we don't know what he wrote. It's one of those things I want to ask God when he gets to heaven. I, what did you write? I just wonder if he wrote the names of all the people that she had been with. And they all start dropping their rocks. We don't know. But the Bible says one by one, they all dropped their rocks. And the only person that was left, according to the law, that could have stoned her was Jesus. And what does he say? He doesn't lecture her. Why? Because I already know my own sin. I don't need you to point it out for me. I already know, but by the grace of God. Even if I'm just brought from the bed of adultery into the, into, into the public square, I know. And he says, where are your accusers? 
neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. He addresses her sin in the form of go and sin no more. There's grace. Lazarus was one of the people that Jesus would have frequented his home on a regular occasion. They were family friends. They were like brothers from another mother. I mean, they were tight. And he dies. They've already buried him by the time Jesus gets there. And the Bible says that Jesus cries. He doesn't cry often. There's about four recorded times in the New Testament where he cries. And he cries. And then he speaks that voice. (laughs) I get emotional thinking about this. Because every one of us will stand before a holy God one day. And that same voice that spoke, Lazarus, come forth, will call your name and your name and your name and my name. I don't know if you've ever been around people that are significant or successful or a celebrity in your world. And if they know your name and they say your name, it's like, wow, they, they know me. Or if they point you out of a crowd with other friends and colleagues, it's like, wow. It's like, but this is the voice that spoke the stars and the world into existence. This is the one that spoke life. And just as he did with Lazarus, he'll do with us. He'll call each of us by name and we'll give an account for the life that we've lived. And the thing that we all desire is to hear Aaron, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in. And he calls Lazarus and he tells him to come forth. And from the back of that grave, he walks out. But by grace, grace, undeserved, unmerited favor. And I'm way out of time. But the criminal on the cross, I love the picture of the cross for a lot of different reasons. But on one side of Jesus is a criminal whose heart is so hard and he's laughing and jeering and just, it's all about him. It's kind of how the world is. But on the other side, there's a criminal who is like, you didn't deserve this, Jesus. We deserve it. Have mercy on me. And right there, the man has no ability to make any penance for his sin or his ways or his criminal activity. And in that moment, Jesus tells him, today you'll be with me in paradise. You are saved. Can you imagine? Like, I want to see that on the heavenly IMAX when I get to heaven. I want to see when Jesus comes walking in and he's overcome death, hell, and the grave. And before he comes and he makes himself known to the disciples yet one again before he ascends to the Father. When, when he comes through and he walks through the, I, we would call it the pearly gates. I know there's theological problems with that, but just bear with me for a moment. I'm from Arkansas. So he walks through the pearly gates and who does he have with him? This thief on the cross the most undeserving person in the world. (laughs) And he's with Jesus. Can you imagine? So the entrance, the the, the way that the the angels would, would, would go on and on, and we see in the book of Revelation, and God the Father standing there, and they're all there, and right next to him, getting the same royal treatment, is this thief that was on the cross that just cried out for mercy, but by grace was saved. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that we serve. And so so when we talk about a bridge between us and God, it's a God that loved you and I so much and he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that if we would believe in him, we would not perish, but have everlasting life. So today, maybe you're still living in the you were era of your life. You're living in your sin. You're you're living in your own passions of your mind and your body, as Paul would say, as he just wrote there in the book of Ephesians chapter two. And you're going, I I want that but God moment. That's what I want. I want to pray for you. I, I, I want to pray for you in just a moment. At every campus, everywhere, I'm gonna, I, I, I want to pray for you because if that's you, I want you to give your heart and life to Christ. I want you to experience the grace that we've all experienced, the grace that I've experienced. I, I'm not perfect. I I say this all the time. If I only preached the parts of the Bible that I was good at, 
it'd only be maybe one, maybe a half of a sermon. And it'd be really short. You guys would like it because it'd be, and you know what it'd be every week. It's not about perfection. I can't span those two points. But the bridge that makes a difference up is Jesus. So would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me right now? Every campus, online, wherever, just bow your head and close your eyes. If you're a Christ follower, just pray right now for people that are, that are every campus that are far away from the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you say, Aaron, I'm, I'm in that, you're, you were, I, I, I'm far away from God and, and I want Jesus Christ to come into my heart and come into my life. I want to experience the grace that you're talking about. I, I, what I'm going to ask you to do is at every campus, just simply flip up your hand high enough for me to be able to see it campus pastor would be able to see it. Just slip it up and back down. And then I'm going to pray for you. It's that simple. It's that easy. If that's you today, I just want you to slip your hand up and say, man, Aaron, that's me. Would you pray for me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just up and back down every campus. Thank you. Even if you're online, you can just hit the raise your hand button right there and just, and they'll just, you just let the camp, the online campus pastor will be there to kind of minister. Thanks. Anybody else? Thank you. Anyone else? every head bowed and every eye closed, I just, out of reverence in this moment at every campus, I'm gonna ask you to pray a prayer with me. And praying this prayer doesn't save you, but if you believe the prayer that you're about to pray, the Bible says that the peace of God that passes understanding will come unto you and the joy of the Lord will be your strength because salvation, that bridge between you and God will be bridged. And you'll experience the grace of Jesus Christ. So with those of you at every campus, lend your voice with those that may be praying this prayer for the very first time and pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart, to come into my life, to be my Lord and my Savior. I am a sinner lost in my sin. And I believe that you, Jesus, are my salvation. Son of God, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave, just like the Bible says. I ask you to allow your amazing grace to transform my soul and my life today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father, I pray right now for every person that prayed that prayer at every campus, online, wherever they are. I pray, God, that you let the joy that only comes from you, God, that joy that comes from your precious Holy Spirit, just to flood them right now. Let the peace of God that passes understanding be so real in their life. And God, I thank you for the amazing grace that we all have the opportunity to share in. In Jesus' name we pray. And we give you praise and glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise for people that made decisions to follow Christ today? Amen. Amen. Come on, can you stand with us all across the street? continue to sing about that grace that saved us, that rescued us, and let's give God praise for it. Let's give Him worship for it today, church.
that grace. We praise you. We worship you for that grace today. Come on, church. Let's begin to thank him. Every voice, every hand lifted. We say, here I stand, high and surrender. I need you now. Oh, my heart, now and forever. My soul cries out. You sing it out. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for that but God moment that each one of us can experience. That undeserved grace that you give so freely, not because of anything that we've earned, but while we were still sinners, you died for us. Now we cannot repay you for that. Only we can do is accept it freely today, God. And I thank you for each person who's accepted that grace today, who's confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you are Lord God. Your word says that we will be saved. And God, we thank you for that decision that was made today. God, we thank you for the, this opportunity to come together and worship the one true God and learn more about you and, and learn more uh, about our faith journey and how it intersects with the almighty God who created the heavens and the earth. God, that is an awesome thought and we thank you for it today, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise just one more time before we go today? Amen. Amen. Hey, before you leave, if today maybe you, you prayed that prayer and you made that decision to follow Jesus, there's a spot on this Next Steps card I mentioned before that says, today I decided to make Jesus Christ my Savior. If you would let us know that and just turn this card in, we would love to, one, just be in prayer with you, but also if there's anything we can do as a church, if you need a Bible, we'll give you a Bible, but we wanna be there with you through that faith journey. And so if you take a moment, I know you're kind of gathering your things and ready to leave, but before you do, just take a moment and do that. Drop these in the offering boxes on your way out. Uh, we would certainly love to be in prayer with you this next week. And so with that, have a great Sunday. We'll see you back next weekend. Just like heaven When you walk into the room There's not a thing that's hidden When every eye is on you Can't get enough of your presence It's the perfect point of view Isn't it just
Sound like, yeah, it sounds like just like heaven. 